Today I want to go over a post I found of a woman doing CrossFit who took a bunch of whey protein and then got some pretty bad side effects related to her digestion and bowel movement. Let's go over the post together so we can analyze it, talk about where these symptoms might have come from, and also explain how you can avoid any side effects when taking protein supplements. Okay, so the post is called Horrific Diarrhea from Paleo or Whey Protein Isolate. She starts off by saying, so my gym recommends a paleo diet-ish, it isn't 100% paleo, and I've been sticking with it for two months so far. Now I'm not going to go over the validity of the paleo diet and its pros and cons that would make this video too long, but what I wanted to point out is that in a strict sense, a whey protein shake wouldn't be considered paleo. But then again, she said she follows a paleo-ish diet, so not 100%. So I'm not criticizing her here, I just wanted to point it out. The post then continues, it's not like I've just randomly started drinking these protein drinks and eating like this just yesterday, but for some reason I'm running to the toilet and have horrible gas. Now side effects from protein supplements and protein shakes are actually very common, even the late ones, and many people experience bloating, gas or the dreaded protein farts that basically every bodybuilder out there has had at some point. I will go over their causes and how to fix them later in the video. First, let's continue with the post. She writes, I decided to skip all my protein drinks last night and ta-da, no diarrhea. I'm not lactose intolerant. Before this diet, I ate a whole bunch of cheese, milk, etc. and would be fine. I just want to know why out of nowhere I've been filled with diarrhea. It's been a little over a week it's been happening. Okay, so what is going on here? Let's use this post to take a deep dive into the biochemistry behind protein digestion, how to optimize it, and how to avoid side effects. If you've watched my video on overall food digestion, you know that protein is a hard to digest food, and there are several steps involved. Here's a quick summary. First, you chew your protein food or drink your protein powder. Then it lands in your stomach where it is mixed with hydrochloric acid, so your digestive juices. Then the liquid mixture called chyme is sent to the small intestine, where most of the protein absorption happens. In the small intestine, pre-digested proteins are then further broken down into amino acids. This is done through a process called hydrolysis. During hydrolysis, a water molecule is placed between two amino acids, which breaks their bond. Because as you probably know, all proteins are really just chains of amino acids. Imagine this process as small scissors cutting protein chains into smaller and smaller pieces and snipping off the individual amino acids one by one. Once the amino acids are absorbed by the small intestine, they can be carried to the bloodstream where they reach all your organs and tissue. Now, this is just the theory if everything goes smoothly. If you get side effects from protein, chances are something isn't working properly. If we leave out food allergies and lactose intolerance, which she says she doesn't have, then in most cases side effects from protein powders really come down to your body not being able to handle the high protein load because some part of the digestive process doesn't work right. When you consume a high amount of protein within a short period of time, you often are testing the limits of your digestive capability because you're bombarding your GI tract with a difficult to digest nutrient. Now you would think that liquid protein would be easy to digest because the body doesn't have to break it down like it has to with food. But keep in mind that liquids pass through your GI tract very quickly, giving it less time to absorb the nutrients. What can then happen is that undigested protein sits in your digestive system for longer than it's supposed to and irritate it, which then leads to diarrhea. Part of this undigested protein can also reach the large intestine where certain gut bacteria feed on it and they create the gas, bloating, and protein farts. Before I tell you how to fix all of this, let's quickly read through the rest of the post. She writes, Also, I wonder if it was too much protein, because I'm 4'11", 138 pounds, 32 years old, don't know if that matters, and some days I've had up to 155 grams. Oh, and I go to CrossFit five days a week. Also, I thought it was pretty funny how she apologized at the end, writing, Anyways, sorry if this is gross, I'm not good at filtering things. When it comes to your ideal protein intake, there are huge debates online, and people go crazy over this, which is why I don't want to get into it now. All I will tell you is that for her height and weight, 155 grams per day is a lot. We don't exactly know how this is split up between shakes and foods, but if we assume that she got half of her protein from protein shakes, 
that would still be around 75 grams or three scoops if one scoop has 25 grams. I usually recommend an overall protein intake from 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day for people looking to build muscle. If you want more info on this, I will link a protein intake calculator from examine.com. They're pretty good. But back to the main question, how do you optimize your protein digestion to the point where you can avoid all these nasty side effects? Basically, what we want to achieve is that all the protein is absorbed properly, so none of it sits in your GI tract to irritate it, and none or very little of it reaches the large intestine where it can create gas. Like I said before, protein digestion is a complicated process with many things that can go wrong. But the three main issues include one, low stomach acid levels. This is usually due to a zinc or vitamin B deficiency, especially B6. There are also other nutrients involved, but those are the main ones. If you want more info on this, please watch my video on increasing stomach acid levels naturally. Next can be a lack of pepsin. Hydrolysis, so the breakdown of protein to amino acids, depends on this enzyme, and it is made in the stomach and only works properly in a low pH level. So when your stomach has a certain level of acidity, this just shows the further importance of stomach acid levels. Without it, you have no bioactive pepsin. And third can be an electrolyte deficiency or imbalance. You see, for the whole digestion process to work, your intestine, which is basically one big muscle, needs to be able to properly contract and relax. For this, especially magnesium and potassium are important, which many people are deficient in. If your protein digestion problems come together with constipation or a mix of diarrhea and constipation, then definitely get your electrolyte levels checked. Obviously, the next question would be how to fix these three issues. Basically, what you want to start with is getting your nutrient levels tested correctly. I have a video on that. And then you would begin by supplementing the stomach acid cofactors if necessary. Like I said before, that would be zinc, vitamin B6, and magnesium and potassium, for example. You can also try a digestive aid like betaine hydrochloride. This is an acidic form of betaine, a vitamin-like substance found in grains and beets. It's the closest thing we have to supplementing hydrochloric acid directly because it significantly lowers the pH level in your stomach. You can also consider supplementing pepsin, the enzyme that I talked about before, and usually betaine hydrochloride comes with pepsin. So in most cases, you can buy them together and don't need to buy them separately. In many cases, you kind of have to try around with which products work for you and which supplements you need and tolerate. So this is just a general guide on how to get started. Before I wrap up this video, let me also give you some general recommendations when it comes to protein powders. If you have problems with lactose, use whey isolates, hydrolyzed whey, or non-dairy protein powders. Also watch for sweeteners and additives. I see more and more people that have problems with them, so definitely try out natural unflavored versions without any added sweeteners. They won't taste great, but it can definitely help. What you can also try is splitting your daily protein shake intake into several smaller doses. Now, I'm not perpetuating the myth that you can only absorb 30 grams of protein at once. But what I'm trying to say is that people with weak digestion often benefit from several smaller doses instead of one big dose that they take after their workout, for example. With that said, let me wrap up this video. I tried to give you a thorough overview of the biochemistry behind protein digestion and how to avoid side effects. I hope this video helped you and I see you in the next one.